In this lesson, we're going to go over content-based regulations of commercial speech. So off the top, what is commercial speech in the context of constitutional law, free speech? When we're thinking about commercial speech in this context, what we're generally referring to is advertisements, advertisements of products or services. So if we see the government is coming along, we're looking at a constitutional law fact pattern, and we see the government is coming along and trying to regulate the content of advertisements, and we're wondering whether this is a violation of that advertiser's freedom of speech under the First Amendment, we simply apply a four-part test that we get from the Supreme Court decision in Central Hudson Gas and Electric Corp v. Public Service Commission. This is a really seminal case in our line of commercial speech cases in First Amendment law. Okay, again, big picture, if we see in a constitutional law back better and the government is coming along and trying to regulate the content of advertisements and we're trying to decide whether this is a violation of the free speech clause of the First Amendment, we apply the four-part test we get from Central Hudson Gas, a really seminal Supreme Court decision. So the first part of the test, part one, the first question is whether the commercial speech being regulated is fraudulent or misleading or related to unlawful activity. If the speech being regulated is fraudulent or misleading or related to unlawful activity, the inquiry ends in favor of the government because this is unprotected speech should be somewhat intuitive. Think about what type of speech, what type of advertisements are fraudulent and misleading. We have an example here on the board. Imagine we have a company that is advertising that our snake oil cures all cancer. Well, we know that this is fraudulent and misleading, okay? Nobody out there, as of the time I'm making this video, nobody out there has some elixir, some chemical, some substance that can cure all cancer. And it's very unlikely this will exist anytime in the near future. When we think about all the different forms of cancer that exist, to have one chemical, one solution that cures all cancer seems extremely unlikely. And we know at least at the time I'm recording this video that this would not be truthful. This is fraudulent advertising. So that's unprotected. Under part one of this Central Hudson gas test, we know the government can come along and can prohibit this type of speech. That's fraudulent or misleading advertising. And we know the government does prohibit this speech. You're not allowed to do this in the United States. Okay, also in this category of unprotected commercial speech, we have commercial speech or advertisements related to unlawful activity. The example we have here on the board is I will sell you this cocaine for $500. We know, just like our last example, the government can also prohibit this type of speech. You know, offers to purchase or sell any type of illegal product or service we know that is not protected speech under the First Amendment. The government can prohibit it, the government can ban it, the government can regulate it. It's unprotected speech. So if the speech being regulated is fraudulent or misleading or related to unlawful activity, the inquiry ends in favor of the government. That's unprotected speech under part one of our Central Hudson Gas test. The government's going to be able and be able to come in and regulate that type of commercial speech without violating the free speech clause of the First Amendment because it's unprotected. And we know the government comes in and bans this type of speech all the time. Okay, so no problem there. But what if the government comes along and they're regulating truthful advertising that is lawful? Some common categories of cases we get where we move from part one to part two to four, when we think about, okay, when would the government come along and want to regulate truthful advertising of lawful activity? Think about advertisements that deal with tobacco, 
alcohol, and prescription drugs. While all of these things are legal activity, prescription drugs prescribed by a doctor is legal activity. You know, consumption of alcohol over the age of 21 is legal activity. Consumption of tobacco over the age of 18 is lawful activity. So these are all things that are lawful and obviously, you know, companies in these industries advertise these things truthfully. We know all the time that companies advertise alcohol, tobacco, and they advertise prescription drugs truthfully. You know, and generally they're allowed to do this. They can go and they can advertise if they're being truthful, it's not fraudulent or misleading, and it's not related to unlawful activity. Okay, well then in those cases, the government is going to have a more difficult time regulating the speech because we get past part one and we get to part two to four. If the speech being regulated is not fraudulent or misleading and is not related to unlawful activity, basically truthful advertisements of tobacco, prescription drugs, alcohol, okay, the regulation will be valid only if the regulation meets these three requirements. And basically, from the decision in Central Hudson Gas and ultimately another decision we get in Board of Trustees State of New York v. Fox, we get this kind of modified version of intermediate scrutiny we apply when we get past part one into part two through four of the Central Hudson four-part test. Okay, and here we say the regulation, if we get to part two to four, and the speech being regulated, basically the advertisement being regulated, the advertisements being regulated are not fraudulent or misleading and not related to unlawful activity. So this could be things like truthful advertising of alcohol, tobacco, prescription drugs, right? In order for the government to prevail, the regulation will be valid only if the regulation serves a substantial government interest, directly advances that interest, and is narrowly tailored to achieve that interest, such that there is a reasonable fit between the government's objectives and the means chosen to accomplish those objectives. Notably, this third prong comes from Board of Trustees State of New York v. Fox. In this really seminal Supreme Court decision, the least restrictive mean standard does not apply when we get to this third prong. We know usually when we're dealing with protected forms of speech, we apply strict scrutiny. When the government is trying to regulate the content of protected speech, we apply strict scrutiny. Here, we get this lower threshold for the government where this third element after, you know, pursuant to the Fox decision, the least restrictive mean standard we usually apply with strict scrutiny does not apply here. And we get this kind of reasonable fit standard. Okay, so probably the best way though to see these three elements, just an important note there to make, we're not applying the least restrictive mean standard we typically apply with strict scrutiny. We get this kind of modified version of what we call intermediate scrutiny in this case. Okay, but the way to probably to best illustrate this is just with, you know, actual case law, some examples. So probably one of the more seminal cases I think that highlights each of these requirements best is going to be Lorillard Tobacco Co. v. Riley, a Supreme Court decision from 2001. And basically, in that case, what you have is the government comes along and they notice that there is a problem of tobacco use in children. Basically, minors under the age of 18 using tobacco. There's all kinds of harms and dangers, right? So to protect children, you know, from using tobacco at a young age, the government comes along and passes this regulatory scheme that's really focused on restricting the way that tobacco companies can advertise their products. So it's a litany of regulations, but just to focus on kind of the main ones, one of the most important from a constitutional law standpoint, one of the more important parts of this regulatory scheme is where the government basically tries to 
prohibit all advertising of tobacco products within 1,000 feet of public elementary schools, public secondary schools, public playgrounds, and public parks with playgrounds on them. Basically, any place within a thousand feet of these four locations, the government says tobacco companies are not allowed to advertise tobacco. And their reasoning, right, the reason their objective here is, look, we don't want children to see these advertisements because this is where these are places where children congregate. Elementary school, intermediate school, you know, you got playgrounds, parks. These are places where children go. There shouldn't be advertisements for tobacco in these places. We don't want to encourage children to use tobacco, right? This is the government's reasoning behind passing the law. Okay, and of course, the tobacco companies are not in love with this regulatory scheme, so they challenge it. They say, hey, this is a violation of our freedom of speech under the First Amendment. This law that you've just passed is in violation of the free speech clause of the First Amendment. So the Supreme Court applies the four-part test from Central Hudson Gas. Okay, they start with part one. The first question is whether the commercial speech being regulated is fraudulent or misleading or related to unlawful activity. Okay, well, when we're thinking about part one, the regulation being passed by the government does not deal with, you know, fraudulent or misleading advertising. They're prohibiting all advertising of tobacco, including truthful advertising of tobacco. So it's not like the government is only banning fraudulent or misleading advertising that deals with tobacco. They're prohibiting even truthful advertising of tobacco. So that is not going to meet this first part. So the speech being regulated is not fraudulent or misleading. Is it related to unlawful activity? No, we know tobacco is lawful. Anyone over the age of 18 consumes tobacco, you know, that's a lawful activity. That's not like selling cocaine. That's not like hiring a hitman to kill somebody. That's not a crime, you know, that's lawful. If you're over the age of 18, that is a lawful activity to possess and consume tobacco. Okay, so we get past part one. This is basically truthful advertising of a lawful activity. Okay, so we get past part one. This is not unprotected speech where the government could come in and easily ban it, right? If this dealt with unlawful activity or fraudulent or misleading speech, the government could easily come in and ban it. But it doesn't meet either of those categories. This is the speech being regulated is not fraudulent or misleading, it's truthful, and it is not related to unlawful activity. Using tobacco is lawful if you're over the age of 18. Therefore, the court applies the modified intermediate scrutiny standard of review we get from Central Hudson Gas and Fox. Okay, and they first look at the interest itself that the government has here. Is this a substantial government interest? Thank you so much for watching this video preview of our Legal Education Accelerator Program, or LEAP for short. If you would like to see the conclusion of this video and gain full access to our entire 1L and 2L video library, integrated outlines, streamable audio versions, additional practice exams with explanations, and much more, we invite you to head over to our website and join the thousands of law students who have already enrolled. To get started with your no risk, free trial today, simply click the link in the description box below or visit www.studicata.com forward slash leap. Hi everyone, my name is Serena and I'm currently a law student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Shiva and I'm currently a law student at Southwestern. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle um, and I am a first year student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Um, I used the Studicata study video series last semester to help me prepare mostly for contracts, 
Um, and I actually made an A plus in contracts last semester, which I greatly dedicate to the Studicata videos. By using Studicata to help me prepare for my final exam, I was able to score the highest grade out of my class on the final and even have my uh, essay distributed as the model answer. Not to mention I had done quite poorly on the midterm and was struggling throughout the whole course of the semester, understanding the material and keeping up with lectures. Because of the Studicata video lectures, I was able to go into my exams with a feeling of confidence. I didn't have to worry about what the rules of law were or how I was going to organize my answer to an essay question. I would absolutely recommend the Studicata series and their online course materials to anyone. Um, I think that they are not like um, professor lectures that you might find online or other outside study materials that you may encounter. Um, I think that the Studicata videos really focus on not only ensuring that you understand the material that you're going to encounter on your final, um, but they also help you to understand kind of the best method for test taking and they really break down how to approach each problem and the best ways to tackle certain methods on testing um, and I think that's really important and I think it's really special. I don't see that anywhere else. Um, in any of the other online resources that I've found. So I would certainly recommend Sudakata to anyone who is studying in law school right now. Um, good luck on your studying and you're gonna do great. I would definitely uh, recommend Sudakata to anybody watching this video. Uh, give it a chance. I'm sure, I'm positive that you will love it, uh, that you will get a lot out of it, uh, and that you will be happy that you gave it a chance. Uh, I definitely am. I know I will be using uh, Studicata in the future. And I cannot thank Studicata enough for getting me through my first semester of law school. I will definitely, definitely continue to watch the Studicata video lectures throughout my law school career. And I highly recommend that any future or current law student do the same.